Hey, good Monday morning and welcome to Noah's Window. You know, sometime back I was talking to Mary Alice about what we might do for Noah's Window between Christmas and New Year's. And I had this idea. I said, why don't we count down our five favorite promises? Five, four, three, two, one, going right up to New Year's Day. Sounded like a great idea. And I still think it is. The only thing was it was a real challenge to pick our five favorites. But promises from God are so important, and especially as we face a whole new future, a whole new year. So Mary Alice and I are going to do our best to bring to you, as we lead up to New Year's Day, our five favorite promises. So here we go. On Monday, here's number five, and I have to give an assist to my dad because he taught me this when I was a kid. And it's one of the favorite promises, not only of my dad's, but it's become a favorite promise in my life. From the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 19. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Now, my dad taught it to me out of the authorized version, and I learned this language. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now I need to say, first of all, this promise was given to a generous people. This is not a promise to stingy people. It's a promise to generous people. And just a little Bible background here. The church of Philippi was a very poor church, but many times they had responded to the work of God, especially as Paul was taking the gospel to the world. And so here's what Paul was saying. He's saying, you have met my needs and now my God will supply your needs. He knew they were poor. He knew they didn't have resources for them to supply their own needs. But he said, my God will supply your needs out of his resources. And my dad just absolutely loved that promise. And he taught it to me when I was a kid. And so many times I would worry about this. I'd worry about that. And where was the money going to come from for this? And dad would quote this verse to me. And he would say, remember, Mark, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, when I was young, It might be money for a bicycle or money for something that I need to do or want to do. But years later, when not only did we have a father-son relationship, we also had a contemporary relationship and he pastored and I pastored and I was leading New Spring at a time when we were thinking about building and relocating. My dad would quote this verse to me. He would say, but Mark, my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And I think that's so important for us as we face 2021, because we don't even know what our needs are going to be. I mean, that's always true. We don't know the needs that we'll have throughout the day, and they're not all financial. I mean, we can have needs of healing and needs of restoration of relationships, and sometimes just the need to have emotional strength to make it through the day. It's a great promise for us. While I'm thinking about my dad, I I guess I want to look back in time and wonder how and why this promise became so special to him that it would be something that he would quote just about every day of his life. I'll give you a little backstory real quick on my dad. Many of you know that my dad pastored the same church in Texas for 50 years. Then he came to New Spring and was our care pastor for 13. But when my dad first began to pastor, it was quite a, kind of an interesting story in a very strange and unusual way in which he became a pastor. But one thing, he had grown up in a little country town, and he had thought he was going to spend his life farming the way he'd grown up. But when he was 25 years old, God called him to preach. He didn't have any background for it. I don't even think he'd ever taught a Sunday school class much. But he and my mom sold everything they had uh, and moved to Fort Worth to go to school to study to be a minister. Well, of course, dad had to pay his way. You know, he had to, to work all the time when he was in school. And so he had a little background in painting Uh, like as in painting houses and and doing some carpentry work. And that's how he he took care of my, my, my mom and my sister during those days. Well, he'd only been in school for a few months. I I doubt that he had preached more than twice or three times, you know, at that age. And he was at a little lumber store, lumber yard in Fort Worth. And in those days, if they were handy men, they might go and sort of stay at this lumber yard. And when someone would come in and want a home project done, well, they would be there and and they would take the project. So my dad had been doing that. He had been to study at the school that morning and that afternoon he'd been painting a house and he came back and he was cleaning out his brushes at the back of the store. And as I said, I don't think my dad had preached more than twice, maybe three times at most. I'll tell you this for a reason. Um, a man came in to talk to the owner of the 
uh, lumber yard. And he said, hey, we've got about three or four families over here in a little section. And I promise you, this was the colloquial name for this little area of town. It was called Ignorant Hill. He said, we've got three or four families over here in Ignorant Hill. And we're thinking about starting a church, but we're looking for a minister. And just as kind of a joke, the owner jerked his thumb back toward my dad. He said, well, there's a preacher back there. Well, you know, dad had just been in Bible school for a few weeks. But the man came back to talk to my dad. And he said, hey, we'd be interested in having you come out and preach. My dad went out there the next Sunday, which was the last Sunday of August of 1951. And at the end of 2000, my dad finished his ministry at that church and came back. For 50 years, he pastored that church. When he started, I think for years, his, his pay was $10 a week. It was a challenge and times were tough. But you know, I've watched my dad throughout those years. Of course, he's with the Lord now. My mom passed a few, few weeks back. I watched him and even though times were tough and there wasn't a lot of money, God supplied every need, not only for our church, but every need for mom and dad. And they never were rich. <laughs> they never had much of this world's goods and yet there never was a moment they didn't have what they needed. And they lived a rich and full and a God-centered life, and God used them to change so many people. So many times I've looked back on my dad's life, and we've wondered how they made it, how they made it through those difficult times. It's no wonder that one of my dad's favorite promises is the number five promise that we're counting down this week, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Let me pray for you. Father, we don't even know what our needs are, but that's okay because Jesus said, you know what we need before we ask, or even before we know, and you're working on those things that we need. If you allow us to have 2021, we know that we will not be alone, that you will be with us and your promises are true. As generous people, we claim this promise that our God will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us on Noah's Window. Mary Alice will be back with number four tomorrow. And we're going to, God willing, just count down our five favorite promises going all the way to New Year's Day. Thank you for joining us.